Babylon, New York, is a quaint village on the southern shore of Long Island. It's home to a number of Italian restaurants, but there's one family establishment that needs Gordon Ramsay's help more than any other. Hi, how are you? I'm the owner of this restaurant, Peter's. There's a lot of stress. This place is a fucking mess. I'm all over the place. It's pretty open right now. What would you like? No one thinks I'm the owner in here. They all think it's my brother, because he's the host. Come on, Peter, help. Yeah. The fuck? There are a lot of restaurant owners that are married to their business day and night, but I choose not to live my life that way. I'm the only son, that's me. I don't really know who Peter thinks he is. Honestly, I think he's hoping for a shot at the next Goodfellas movie. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. That was a great movie, right? Yeah, that was awesome. We're a close family. We're a close family. It's a family business. You understand? Come on, you I believe Peter is a core problem of the restaurant. Who the fuck is he? You know, I'm passionate. I'm Italian. I yell. Gentlemen, why is this guy here? Two minutes later, I'm over it. Come on, let me hug it out. Let's hug it out. Let's hug it out. He takes advantage of the place. Can I have a cappuccino from here, please? I take so much pride in myself, my appearance, my car, my clothes. Well, I got sauce on my suit. I take care of myself, and it shows. You can put your hands on me. I promise I won't bring you up on charges. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's not so concerned with the customer. He's more concerned with the, them noticing him. Instead of buying a stove, I bought a suit, you know? Okay. The tools that we have in the kitchen right now need to be sharpened. There are three ovens down. The oven on the bottom is completely out. We have a broiler that's not working. When I got dressed tonight, I felt like I should have been in Florida. You know what I mean? The whole family's throwing everything on Tina's shoulders, and I don't think she can handle it. OK, I don't give a shit if it broke, but I have to have a nervous breakdown over a goddamn candle holder. This restaurant was one of the top restaurants in the village here. And uh, it's just really slowly declined. The restaurant is not making the money that it was making. Right now, we're not paying the bills. Do me a favor, go take a walk. How's that? Go take a fucking walk. We're getting phone calls. Yeah, the guy has not stopped calling, yeah. and, then, and my father's making the situation call. worse. I feel that my business is at a pivotal point. It keeps me up at night that I know there are problems here. You yeah. made a big mistake, John. Yeah, I did, huh? Yeah. Before I lose my life, I would sell the place, and I don't want to do that. That's not in my heart. I'm here in Babylon, in New York, to meet Peter from Peter's Restaurant. It's a family, small, quaint restaurant, and it's on its ass, struggling big time. And he said he was going to pick me up. Where is he? Where is he? Come on. This can't be him. What the fuck is this? Peter? How you doing, Gordon? Good to see you. Nice car. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? you? Welcome to Babylon. Yeah. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Good, great, yeah. man. You look Good well. See you. Thank you. So do you. From the minute we met, it was like Superman arrived. You know, so I'm very excited. Come on in. I feel like I'm in Hollywood. And um, what a quaint little uh, town. So here it is. Welcome. Peters, thank you. FDO. Oh. I want to introduce you to my family. Mom, Dad, this is Gordon Ramsay, and this is Tina. Tina. Nice to meet you. When I first met him, like, you know, I didn't know how to take him, but with this hair like that, I figured he's one of these crazy foreigners. It's your restaurant, Peter's. It's my name. It's yeah, name. it's mine. How nice, all the family working together. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mom, Dad, big brother, little sister. When Gordon got here, I was so looking forward to meeting him. I mean, he's a smart guy. He's a good-looking guy. He's charismatic. So who's the chef? chef Robert. Robert. Robert Gordon oh, yeah. Ramsay. How are you? This, this is, Ro this is Robert O'Sara. And you're the head chef. I'm the head chef. Excellent. These are my two best Jerry? friends, Jerry and Jerry. Jerry and Jerry. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? If they don't like the food, they go over. They, they, Jerry and Jerry yeah, beat the shit out of them. Yeah. I feel honored. I've been introduced to the mob. Well, this one's going to be interesting, isn't it? Fuck me. We decided? Yeah, um, I start with the crab cake, please. Crab cakes? Thank you. OK. And then one of my favorites, lobster ravioli. Very good. Lovely. Thank you, Alan. I'm sorry, your first name was? Angelo. Angelo. Gentlemen, I got uh, Ramsey's order, please. 
Okay, here's the crepe. Lovely, crepes. thank you. Okay, this is a spicy Dijon sauce. Mm -hmm. The crepes are homemade. They are homemade, yes. Thank you. Enjoy. Looks terrible, the salad. Is this salad fresh? There's all like little bits in there. Like rotten. Huh? How old is that salad? Take it back before something jumps out of there. I'll just taste the crab cake. Okay. And, I mean, it's, it's rotten then, no? Yes. Damn. This is ridiculous, man. Look at the... How old is this salad? You make me look like a moron. Um, Angelo. Yes. I don't want to put you in an awkward position, but that's stone cold in the middle, and that's not fresh crab meat. That gross. OK. I'll let him know. Yeah. When you come into an Italian restaurant, you want to identify that the food is fresh instantly. Crab cake, cold. Not a good start. He might knock the ravioli. But He's going to knock the ravioli. What is he going to knock about the ravioli? Is it good, no? Yeah, from Restaurant Depot. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I don't need any parsley. That's not even lobster. That's just, like, baby food inside gunk. Who, who garnished that dish? What? Who garnished that dish? You got to be kidding me. You put half a pound of parsley on my plate. He said, wow, enough parsley on this dish? First of all, I put the parsley on it. That's my job, and I'll decide what goes on it. It ain't your problem. Yeah, but I don't need to hear criticism, which I already know then the dish has too much. Then you tell him John did it. Go yell it in. What's going on? It's craziness. It's chaos. At times, I can shoot every person in here. It's over. Gentlemen. It's over. Gentlemen. It's over. It's over. What's going on? John, the sous chef, is insulted over the parsley. I'm going to go defuse a fight in this kitchen right now. Excuse me. That's how I like Whoa. to do it. So I did it my way. Earth. Do you understand what I'm saying, Angelo? All the fucking time. Holy smoke. Welcome to Babylon. Now that Gordon has tried the food, it's time for a heart-to-heart -heart with a Pellegrino family. I'd like to be told the truth, nothing but the truth. And the quicker I get to the truth, the quicker I can help. So, manager, the way I look at things is everyone needs to have a job to do. He comes in, doesn't come in, comes in, tells everyone My else to do what he's supposed to be doing, including me. I try to clean up. He wants coffee, he wants a water. They don't listen. They really don't. Right. Right. He knows that this man so right. gets so every day right. out of it. You, you don't know about the day-to-day -day business, and we appreciate it, Mom, but you're here, you know, but you really shouldn't give input of anything. He comes here and creates more problems. I'm sorry for being so personal, but I held it. I had to go to the restaurant. I'm trying. This is my point. This is why the business Fuck It's day two in Babylon, and Gordon has already discovered that the speciality of this restaurant is arguing. Now it's time to investigate the state of the kitchen. What's in this one? Bloody hell. What is in there? Fucking hell. Bread rolls. Bread rocks. Temperature of the fridge is not even cold, so it stuff's rotten. Mold. Moldy, decay, rotten onions. Yeah, they look like fucking camel's turd. It looks like something out of a fucking sci-fi movie. Oh, my God. Did you eat that? It's like the fridge has dripped all over it. The whole thing is leaking here. Last year's rainwater inside. The whole thing looks like it's about to fall down. Hey. Mate, thanks for coming. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very sorry, mate. Something happened. I had to pick something up. What happened? I had to pick up something that came uh, indirectly to, you know, inadvertently to the wrong place. This was like an act of God this morning. Act I would have really good. Okay. Let me been. show you uh, something that I hope will open your fucking eyes. Um, Tina, Angela as well. Yeah. Have a look at this. When was the last time you went inside a walk-in fridge? The walk-in fridge? Yeah. Uh, I had a hot flash last week, I think. A hot flash? What does yeah. that mean? I mean, I was, like, hot, and I walked in here for a second. What the fuck? Look, there's onions growing on top of onions. Well, it gets worse, unfortunately. The whole thing leaking here. What the fuck is that? What is that? I don't know. You have to ask the chef. You can become famous in the next 24 hours for fucking poisoning half of Babylon. You ought to be fucking ashamed. 
That is sour and has to be four weeks old. Just, just, just smell that for me. No, no, just, just smell it. Gordon, I just got off. Yeah, okay. Just, just smell it though, Tina. Oh, that's the that. tray. Would we really serve that? No. But does it just fall under the chef's job? Well, where are the fuckers? This is your fridge yeah, listen, in the middle you're, of you're your really... fucking business. Can we get out of here before yeah. I catch something? Yeah. I feel terrible. It's like you know, telling somebody telling you your kid is ugly. This is ridiculous here. Hey, hold on a minute. Oh, hey. The walk-in box is a mess. But you know what? That walk-in box is exactly how we felt about working in the kitchen. It's like blame everything on me. If blame we're buying the big it. fires in Chicago, Hurricane Katrina, 9-11, what the fuck? I mean, I've never seen something like this. Stop just, acting like a fucking baby. I'm not acting like a baby. Yes, just you throw are. everything on me because well, it's like, you know what? Here. I Don't take it, number one, me. I want me. the place clean. OK, so clean End it. End the fucking story. Clean it, guys. Please clean the place. You're embarrassing me. I've never seen something like this. This is unbelievable. Before Gordon does anything else, he wants to make sure the kitchen is spotless. How we doing, ladies? I believe Peter is a core problem of the restaurant's dysfunction, and he isn't concerned much about anybody else but himself. The kitchen is now cleaner than it's been in years, so Gordon can turn his attention to observing tonight's dinner service. And reservations, what have we got booked? We're really, uh, what do we have? Some, uh, There's nothing in there. Business is, is, is rough, it's hurting. I may have to sell my watch. I've got $20. So it is fake. Fake. The only thing that's fake is my teeth. They're fucking white. They're white, they're bleached. How much does that cost? A thousand a visit. I just brush mine twice a day. Fuck it now. But it goes well with a brown tan. Well, you know, you, somewhat. Yeah. I'd rather buy a new fucking stove. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit. It's been such a long time since I have good equipment here. It's bothering me, but there's nothing I can do about it. It's not my restaurant. What doesn't work? All these stove tops here don't work. The broiler doesn't work proper. This, this oven does not work. We use it as storage. We keep our towels and stuff in here. When was the last time a new piece of equipment was bought in this kitchen? Yeah, they never put a nickel into this place. Peter is a lot more proud of his car than he is his fucking restaurant. Absolutely. That kitchen is the heart of the restaurant. When that's hurt, it's like a clogged artery. You're going to have a big problem. With so much of the kitchen equipment not working, it's almost impossible for the chefs to do their jobs. And their frustration has been felt by the rest of the staff. Okay, Where's my uh, Portofino? They're oh. coming, but don't keep asking for them. Don't ask for them one more fucking time. When there's a chaotic night here, I have Robert screaming. When the fishes are ready, that's when they're going to come out. He's an excellent chef, but he's crazy. Take them, take this out. <laughs> fucking got to keep asking for the fucking food. Can you see if my son, the doctor, wants another bottle of wine on, uh, sure. Yeah. Can you folks another bottle of wine on Peter? Are you all right? Who's got C5? Me. Hi. Uh, buy them uh, uh, after dinner drink on it. Is the doctor comp tonight? Is he? The, doc the doctor's comp. Do you take care of it personally, or do you put it on the business? It goes off the top. It's an expense. How can I not? I mean, the guy, you know, the guy takes care of me. It's only business. I think they said that in The Godfather. I can charge my doctor. Trust me, he earns enough. Yeah. It's like a little meeting place here. Yeah, a little meeting huh? place, yeah. Shame nice. no one's spending money. The combination of Peter spending a great deal of money on himself and giving away free meals has put the family business in jeopardy. And brought a debt collector to the door. The guy you... What? Oh, I... Yeah, he'd like... No, not right now, I know, buddy. No, no, not right now, I know. Oh, as soon as you got a minute. Yeah, OK. As soon as you got a minute, telephone buddy, tough guy. Go fun. fuck yourself. Get, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Pick your fucking Touch hands me, up, John. Tough guy. Pick your fucking Touch hands me. up. You wanna hit me? You're the tough guy. You wanna hit me? Nah. Put your hands on me, nah, Pete. No. I'll let you do it first. Listen, Listen to, me, to me, tough guy. No, you're the Listen tough to me. guy. Our friendship is fucking you over. You ain't my friend. You're a scumbag. You're a low life That's why scumbag. Yeah. You always been a scumbag. You, you fucking me, talk you to me like that again, you get hurt. John, You'll get fucking I, hurt. You ain't got me scared. All right, you ain't got me scared, bro. This was a joke. Don't fucking walk up on me. Tina, don't fucking hurt you, you little John. Get the fuck out of here. No, 
I and spoke to did. other people too that he's in debt with that called me up and that said if there's anything do I could this. do. Well, I just wanted no, no. to talk to him. Now wasn't the time. After Peter's brush with an overzealous debt collector, Gordon checks in with his sister, restaurant owner Tina. I know I've just arrived, but <sighs> fuck me. How do you manage? Oh, I'm motivated by all the nice people that come in to visit me. Uh -huh. But other than that, I'm having a breakdown. Tell me your biggest frustration. What's the one big issue that you have? From the kitchen to my brother, just it seems like it's only like a free for all. Like everyone's just doing what they want. I get so exasperated sometimes, so stressed out that I want to cry or commit bloody murder. But does Peter play a part in the financial side? He'll take his paycheck but not come in. I come in and I'll, they'll tell me, oh, Peter took two hundred dollars. Shit. It's like. I didn't even fucking break even for the day, and he took money. You can't do that. How long can you continue functioning like this with Not the same... much longer, and I can't, I can't do it either. I would sooner sell the business. I'm not a martyr. I feel like I'm doing it on my own. And that's the part about it I resent. It's not fair. If this doesn't work, you know, what's at stake in terms of, you know, how much would you lose? My house. Your house. This is crazy because the true definition of a family business is every member of that family working within mm -hmm. to make it successful. Mm -hmm. Not one person carrying the burden. I know. It's day three and time for Gordon to give the family a much needed wake up call. This business was set up 17 years ago as a family business, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Today, we're going to renew that commitment. We're going to make it more family than ever before. This is what we're going to do. You, yeah, with your father, are going to go and run the kitchen. You're going to cook. <laughs> yeah, you're going to run the kitchen. Oh, oh I love it. My God. Tina. Hey, hey. I want you to go and work in that kitchen and just experience what it's like behind that line and work with your dad. You like food. You certainly eat enough of it here. <laughs> Tina, you're going to run the dining room with your mum, OK? Get in the kitchen and get familiar with what's going on. Peter, I've never seen cook. Well, I've never seen him boil an egg. Look at me. I'm, I'm looking shaking. at you. Find it. I'm yeah. fucking shaking. I'm, you're not back shaking here. enough. Let's go. Come on, huh? Peter's like one of those guys. He eats out a lot, so he assumes he knows about cooking in restaurants. He has no clue about the kitchen. Hello. Hello. Welcome. While Peter and his father are settling into the kitchen, why is this burner don't go lower? Welcome to my world. Gordon is packing the dining room with hungry customers. First order's coming in. Stand by. Can I start with you? Yeah, sure. What would you like? Salmon, other. Ma, do me a favor. Make me an espresso, please. Go <laughs> make it yourself. I just want my mother to get me espresso and I'm ready. Espresso? Glad to know. Is he always like this? Yeah. Huh? Is he? My God. If my dad and my brother were the chefs, I think there'd be a mass murder in here. I have an order. All they, they aboard. Do. The first order's in. I need black olives and artichokes. Right underneath here. Could yeah. someone set the us up? Oh, hold on. Now it's them that didn't set you up properly. No, no right I, I'm having a meltdown here. Are we ready to order? Do you need a few minutes? Can I have a fucking working oven? Those are the ones I ordered already. That clams and the soup. What the fuck is that? This is a, a clusterfuck you, you, back here. Angela, table of seven, please, my darling. The table last... of ten coming in the door. Where are the clams? Where's the salmon? Where's my lemon? We're, We're shouting we for lemons, down. and look, there's a fucking box of lemons here. I need, I need clean spoons. I need clean spoons. I need chicken. I need chicken. What's that in front of your eyes? Oh, OK. Peter is, he's a 250-pound spoiled baby. Holy fuck. They two didn't get the instruction to tell you they're clams. Uh, tell them I'm buying dessert. Just... They don't need appetizers. No, no, you have to get them out. What do you want me to do? I can do what I can do at the moment. moment. OK, that's put the cat amongst the pigeons. Peter is now getting a taste of his own medicine. He's now seen how difficult it is to cook in that kitchen with nothing that works. So this is embarrassing because this should have been a family, close-knit, tight-run restaurant. It's an hour into lunch service, and there's still no food coming out of the kitchen. It's done. It's What's so burning good. in here? We just burnt the chicken. Dude, We're in the fucking weed. We just cut the hands with I don't know. I'm looking for a corner to hide somewhere. Can someone get me Tina, please? I need orange juice. You want Tina to stop now and get you a glass of orange no, juice? Do I have anybody that can hey, help me? Can look you get at me, me orange juice? Please? Fuck yourself. What? I beg your pardon? Ooh. 
Take it easy. Take it easy, killer. I want to see what big boy's made of. Come on. Let's go, yeah? Yeah. Let's go, big boy. Relax. Finally, someone told him, listen, buddy, don't act like you're, you're the king over here because you got nothing. You? Get the fuck out of here. Out. Robert, back on here, please. Yeah, let's go. God. Unbelievable. Now Gordon has proved his point about the inadequate kitchen, he realizes that he has to do something drastic to get the restaurant ready to be relaunched. Gordon did, you know, attack Peter in the right way because he saw him as being, you know, a big shot, a guy trying to act like a big shot. Would you do me a favor? Uh, yeah. We go out. Go get some fresh air or, you know, go get a fucking manicure. Polish your wheels or do something. It's day four. And although Peter's attitude to work has been a disappointment, Gordon has no choice but to introduce the first phase of his transformation plan. Right, today is a new beginning, a new chapter for Peter's restaurant, yes? Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that really needs to take place here is a commitment. We're going to implement changes. Follow me, please. Yeah, through to the kitchen. Welcome to your new kitchen. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Holy <laughs> Bro. Have a look, have a look, have a look. Gordon brought in a team of kitchen specialists who worked all night to give this restaurant something it sorely needed, a proper kitchen. Every oven is working. Oh, oh. my God! Oh, yeah. oh Peter, let me oh, get it! it. <laughs> Plates, stoves, ovens, mats. I can't believe it. I knew double fridge as well. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Oh. Yes, proper working fridge, yes. Uh, what a kitchen. I think we were all starting to lose steam here and give up, and, and he, he brought us back to uh, a sunny day. Your new kingdom. This is really a good thing. Now I can really have a real kitchen where I can actually do things the right way. I've invested in this. Now I want to see you. With opportunity comes responsibility, and I think that's what Gordon was trying to point out. You know what? I've given you what you asked for. Now you're responsible for, to use it respectfully. It's time for the chefs and Gordon to put the new kitchen to good use as Gordon starts to change the menu. There we go. I want to focus on family-style dining. We're going to be making simple, stunning, classic Italian foods. OK, lasagna. I'm very excited tonight to cook with Gordon. Definitely an honor to cook with someone like him. I fell into a bit of a rut culinarily. And now that Gordon's given me this new menu to work with, it's a revitalizing kind of feeling, you know? Let's go. Gordon introduces a new family-style menu that will make Peter's restaurant stand out from the competition. There's, what, six, seven Italian restaurants out there in Babylon. One thing that can separate this restaurant from the others is running this like a true family restaurant. Gordon came about the idea of family style, which I think is an exceptional idea. We needed something to help us stand out. For tonight's dinner service, the parsley-covered ravioli and the cold crab cakes have been replaced by fresh, homemade, family-style dishes, such as... Lobster ravioli, the penne lasagna, grilled flank steak, capellini and rocchetta, and then porchetta, which is beautiful. You know, these are dishes that are popular. This is now a time for you to sort of really seriously start getting that message out there. It's so simple. OK, guys, have we got a, a, a big... Big, big, big launch. Big yeah. Balloon. Yeah, big time. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. With a brand new kitchen, a redesigned menu, and a new approach that reaches out to families, the restaurant is ready for its big relaunch. Let's I mean... do it. With the doors about to open, Gordon gathers the staff for a last minute pep talk. OK. Tonight is a critical, crucial night. Are you with us, or are no, you...? I'm just waiting for... for OK. Answer. We're right, really busy right now. Once again, Peter has a debt collector on his doorstep. Well, you are interfering. That's what I'm saying. We're going the way. Hey, would you I mind...? I'm interfering. you got to wait two minutes. i got to talk. Get out of the way. What? Why don't you go in the way so we can go on? Don't get out of the way. Oh, wait a minute. I'm talking to the... Why don't you go... Talking. No, get out of the way. I want to talk to you. I'm no, saying go the way. No. What are you getting like? Relax, 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 relax. Oh, no, relax, relax. Relax, relax. 
think you talking? Get the fuck out. Who the fuck are you? Relax, relax. Yo, dear, dear. Who the fuck are you, a fucking tough guy? One so Oh, shit. Hey, hey. hey. Get tough guy. Come on, you tough Look at my father. You made a mistake. Come on. Come on. You made a mistake. I'll hurt you, you come back. Get it, tough guy. Come on. Stop. Get the fuck out of here. Stop. Come on, you fake tough guy. Come on, you fake tough guy. Come on. Come on. Come on, you want to try me? Try me. Come on, I'll put you in the hospital. Yeah, fucker. Yeah, fucker. Come out of the way. Come out of the way. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Come on, you fake fucking gangster. You fucking blowjob. You're a fucking blowjob. You're embarrassing me. Fuck this guy. Go inside. Come on, Peter, Peter, relax. 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 So who the fuck is he? Relax. To come in my fucking place. Relax, 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 relax. Come on. Hey, my fucking you scumbag. Get it, tough guy! Get it! Right now, right now! Hey, come on, big boy. Take it easy. Come in here. Come in, come in. Come in, come in, come in. I'm sending five guys to his house right now. Jeremy and guys are on their way right now. Who the fuck is he? Give me his mallet. When he comes in the. It's the last fucker that's coming in this place. You're getting fucking hot headed. What? Did you see my father on the floor? No! So what do you mean I'm getting hot headed? Sing, relax. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Hey. I told him to get out. Are you OK? They fight a lot. You know, these things happen. Relax, 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 relax. Let's get outside. Two seconds. Walk. Fresh air. Come on, with me. Let's go. What's going on? What happened? Don't conduct that in my no, no. business. No, no, no. You're right. You're That's right. first of all. Second of all, I didn't like the way he spoke to you. He was disrespectful. Relax, 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 relax. Big deep breath. Yeah? I'm here to help. The row has wasted crucial preparation time. Now Gordon urgently needs to get Peter and the staff focused on tonight's relaunch. Big, big, big night. I mean, a seriously big night, yeah? A new menu, new family-style dining, new attitude. This could be the big turning point for this restaurant. Use this opportunity to show off how good we can be. Good luck. There's excitement in the restaurant about the new menu. Do the fish, it's excellent. Big clams, a single. I like the idea of family style. But back in the kitchen, it's up to the chefs to deliver. The big tables are all ordered in family style. Now all of a sudden we're working with all this new stuff. It's like alien. May I have a, a cranberry juice, salsa and cranberry? Actually, you know what? Do you have pineapple juice? Yeah. Give me pineapple juice with a lot of ice and a splash of cranberry. It's good for my sugar. It's one hour into dinner service, and the restaurant has not been this full for seven years. Let's set this up for 14 right now. Come on, come on, come on. Right now, they've got a 14 top just arrived, and this is a true test now, because family style should make their life a lot easier, or it can go tits up and be a disaster. It's so busy. Yeah. Tina. Tina, you have a throat lozenge? Peter, as an owner, he should step up to, you know what, move his ass a little bit more, because he's in la-la land. I don't know what to do. Peter, this table right here. Yeah. Bring him an appetizer, too. That's all. All right? Give him a little rub on. But when Peter does decide to lend a hand... So hungry, man. Instead of serving the baked clams... You got a fork back here? Anybody got a fork? Come on, I want to see Gordon see me eating. I don't want to get yelled at. He decides to eat them. Oh, man. Oh, Peter. Man. Excuse me, Peter. I got to ask you for one favor. It's delicious. Anything. Robert. What? What the fuck is going on here? Nothing. Nothing. You're hungry, yeah? Fuck off, yeah? Go and look at your stomach in the window. Uh, Let's go. Yeah, we need another dozen baked clams. One of yours went out. Another dozen? Still waiting on my baked clams. All right, I'll take care of you with that. I'll bring a small one. Guys, should I, come, should I come back next week for the baked clam? Should I go down the block for the other restaurant? I promise you, you'll have it. OK, dining room's filling up. New menu, new kitchen, new family-style dining. But Peter is my concern right now. You know what, honey? I'll take a cappuccino if you can make me with two equals, please. It, it was really difficult. I mean, you know, I mean, my legs hurt, my tired. It's, it was harder than the gym. It was really harder than the gym. When Gordon puts the pressure on Peter, yeah. They're waiting 50 minutes for the fucking clams. Peter takes it out on his staff. 
tough. Fuck is she doing? No one came to your table yet? Nicole, are you kidding me? You didn't go to these people's table? That wasn't supposed to be my table. I don't care what it was supposed to be. Take it right now. Right now. He was yelling at me in front of my customers for things that I didn't do. Wasn't supposed to be my table. Imagine this. It's hard for him to, you know, realize that he did something wrong, so he takes it out on everybody else. Get them one bottle on me right now for all your comedy of errors tonight. Thank you, so you cost me a bottle of wine. Just get them the bottle of wine, please. But I don't know why Peter's temper is like that. Fuck a moron. I mean, he's in everybody's way. Everybody else just brushes it off. But I guess I just take it a little personal when he's screaming at me in front of my table, so. The fuck is going on with A7 and everything? What do you, what's... my tables have said stuff to me, like, oh, wow, he's being hard on you, blah, blah, blah. Hard on you? Look, you're very hard person to talk to. How can I be a hard person to talk to? That's ridiculous. Well, if you need to talk to me, I would rather you talk, talk to me, like, back here. How could you cry? She was like a, a machine gun. She just started shooting all this stuff out. She looked like she was having some sort of uh, meltdown. I don't make the drinks. I don't make the food. This is ridiculous here. Hey, hold on a minute. Oh, you're embarrassing me. Relax. Just turn it down a bit. Just turn the fuck Hey. Oh, my God. I've never seen something like this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. With over 200 satisfied customers, the relaunch is a success. In spite of Peter. This place was a success and is now pissed through your hands. Well, it is what it, 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 it is. What it is. You've neglected it. I understand, but right now we're not in a situation, money-wise, to fix it. Well, fuck me, what's the time? What do you think this is? Your fucking little salon to get your massage and get fed? You're fucking walking around this place with a bowl of food in your fucking hand. Eating away. That's not how I run my fucking business. No. I'm getting a fucking headache. I don't think you've seen a day's work for fucking 20 years. Yeah. I, I, I've had my own personal problems in the last We year. all have problems. Problem, 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 problem. You're no different. Let's start working at the problem. What's the, pro what's the what's problem? What's the problem? You. That's where I'm starting. Excuse me? He's fucking nuts, this guy. You're right, I'm fucking nuts. Because you've got fuck all to worry about right now, have you? Listen to me. I'm fucking listening. Listen to me. You sound like you're out the fucking godfather. Yeah? What the fuck is going on here? You're the only fucking here right now that's not pulling their weight, and that's not fucking good enough. I think this place will run better without you. I think this place will run better without you. I, 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 I disagree. You disagree? I'll own certain problems, and I'll take responsibility for a lot of things. That was about as convincing as a fucking what perfect... What the fuck do you want to do? I'm here. I need two minutes with you on your own. You got Tonight, it. I'll see you in the morning. I love him. Tonight, go home and come back tomorrow morning and think about what are you going to put back into the business tomorrow. Think about it and make sure it's fucking good, because I'm going to be here to make sure you do it. I'm never speechless. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm like, I'm a little hurt. What I'm seeing now is he said to me everything all these people wanted to say to me and haven't. So maybe Gordon's right. You know what? I'm not going to say maybe Gordon's right. Gordon is right. I'm committed. I'll be back, and I'll, I'll do what he says. It's for the good of the business, and in the end, this place is me. This place is me. This is me. This is what I do, so I got to make it work. To Gordon's amazement, the next morning he found Peter on the phone calling to fix the walk-in fridge. We need our walk-in box fixed. It's leaking here. It's like, oh, she has rainwater. I want you to come here and uh, do whatever it needs to have done. I'm really amazed that Peter is taking the initiative and, and putting a new walk-in box. And to go with the brand new kitchen, Robert and John have a new attitude. I'm very excited. I think everything's going so well. Uh-huh. Family style's working. Going well, yeah. yeah. And the family style dining is a huge hit with customers. This is really good. I'm enjoying myself. I haven't had family style in, uh, down here in Babylon in a long time. With word of mouth spreading, profits are soaring. 
At the end of the night, we made more money. We made more money this way. It's unbelievable. As soon as they calm down, I'll show you. To reach out to the local community, Peters hosted the first ever Babylon Family Day. Holy cow, look at this! <laughs> hey, everybody, enjoy the lasagna. There's lasagna. Help yourself. Food is good. Really good. <laughs> this is a huge, great start to, to push the new family theme. <laughs> Come and my family will serve yours. To make the relaunch complete, Peter decided the restaurant needed one more thing. The Father, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This was a rebirth, so it needed its blessing. Can, can I hug you, <laughs> Father, please? Uh, I got a thing about hugging Father. Thank you so much, all right? In the weeks ahead, Peter was more helpful. I'll get some, ex yeah, I'll get some extra plates, too. Okay. He made amends with Nicole. All right. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, all right? My priorities were mixed up. Instead of trying to be like, you know, the boss, I'm gonna be a team player here, and whatever needs to be done, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna ask people if they need help with things. There you go, enjoy, I like that shirt. Thank you. Beautiful. And even provided Tina with the help she needed. I mean, I'm thrilled. I even think Peter will do his part. I really do think he's gonna keep his commitment. I'm sorry, all right? I love you. I love you too. So. Let's just confirm one thing, shall we? We've got a taste of how good this restaurant can be. Absolutely. And just comparing to what I experienced the first time I arrived here, tonight, the difference was night and day. Before Gordon got here, this place was nose diving. The man reinvented my restaurant. I think now he's given us all our spark back. If you cannot make this work, you're mad. You've got a potential gold mine here that can make every one of you successfully fucking rich. We are definitely on our way to success here. Now we have to take the ball and run with it. Thank you for the commitment. Yeah? Yeah? We've been giving all the help in the world. Time for us to shine, and we got what we need. And uh, I'm ready to do it. Get up, babe. All of Gordon's ideas stemmed to keep this restaurant synonymous with family. We all love each other, so that's my main ingredient now for the restaurant. And I think that's so important. $3,000 for all that extra material. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> I really fell in love with him. My first son is going to be named after Gordon, Gordon Ramsay Pellegrino. Gordon really brought our family much closer together. Good night, buddy, yes? Thank you. If this family can stay together and commit to this restaurant, it will be successful, but stop the fucking fighting. Tuckahoe, New York, a wealthy old commuter town 45 minutes north of Manhattan and home to the Old Stone Mill restaurant and bar. But now the Old Stone Mill is in danger of grinding to a halt for good. Okay, six years ago I, I took this place and I began my quest to convert this old mill into a restaurant. And here we are, open four years now. Done. We took a risk. There's no investors here. You know, we built it out. I did everything in here myself. Is this the right spot? All the woodwork, the carpentry, the plumbing. The only thing I really didn't get involved in was the electrical work. <laughs> OK. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. But no one's coming in or trying to come in. I'm embarrassed that I can't go out with the sides that I need for a table. My boss, Dean, he's a pain in the ass. He has come in and screamed at me. Come on, man, read the fucking tickets. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. What the fuck? Do I still have passion for food? No. And it shows. There were days I just couldn't think of eating the food. I eat my food and my family eats my food. And I think it's good. We don't have a very young crowd. There is a assisted living facility right behind us and we do have a lot of the blue heads come in. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the customer base. Hopefully the entrees will come soon. Service, please. We do have a problem with the service because it is very hard to get people to work here. Can I get someone here to clean the sink? Missing a dish here, missing a knife, a little piece of glass on the table. Never hurt anyone, right? I have a reoccurring nightmare that I've had from day one. What happens if I open up, staffed up, food ready, and 
no one decides to come here. Well, it happened this year. I don't know. I don't have answers for that. I wish I did. When you're making no money, it's very hard to convince you that tomorrow is going to be a better day when you have bills to pay. It's not that nice when it's slow. Well, a slow night is a lot of sad faces. You tell me what to do. Well, he's Tell me right. what to do. Let everybody earn money and let Dean take it in the ass, as always. Why aren't more people coming here? I don't know. I really, really don't know. Being behind on my mortgage and the thought of them foreclosing on my house, I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. I can't take it. Hi, honey. Hi, babe. I need money for dry cleaning. Money? What about these people? Think they need money? <laughs> I think my wife might know. These last couple of months have been the worst ever for me. I'm going to be up here and see who the lucky people are that are going to get paid today. This restaurant isn't just a restaurant. It's our life. It's our future. It's our children's future. himself could be here any minute. I almost drove by this place. What a beautiful building. What scares me is why no one's eating here. I'm about to find out. What oh, dear. Gordon. How are you? I'm Dean Marazzo. Nice to see you. Well. Very nice to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for coming by. No matter what you say, the guy's a winner. His Michelin stars are like World Series rings. He's got them. Tom? Hi. Tom, how are you? What is this is the, the barman, yes? This is the chief cook and bottle washer here. This OK, guy. fantastic. You know, I know his credentials. I know how good he is. I'm starving. Oh, OK. I do believe Gordon could help the restaurant, but how much so, I don't know. Jeannie, this is Gordon Ramsay. When he approached me and put out his hand, said hello to me, well, first of all, I like blonde men, so he was adorable. Jean, nice to see you. I felt a very warm feeling. So glamorous. Gordon will be a plus in my life. This is our menu. It just has a little history on one side and our menu on the other. Thank you. You got it. Hmm. How you doing? So I'd like to know the crab cakes are homemade with fresh crab meat. Fresh crab. Lovely. I'll start off with crab cake. I'd like to see a shrimp. Please, I'll have the chopped salad, please. Thank you. And then for um, main course, risotto. And then I'll go for the tilapia on papillot. Michael. You do things your way. I am very nervous. He's going to come in here, I'm going to cook for him, and he's going to say, eh. Are you um, chewing gum? Yes. You are. Is that normal? I suppose. Ready? Apart from being slow, the waiters think it's normal to chew gum. Hey. Come on, let's go. Send it out. You know, somebody of his caliber come in. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to say. Oh, thank you. Mm. It tastes really strange. I can't put my finger on it. Something really weird in there. It's like a sour mayonnaise flavor. I'm hoping that he likes one of the dishes that he ordered, two of the dishes, maybe all of the dishes. Not to hell. Cheese. Wrapped in filo paste, deep fat fried. I've eaten some prawns in my life, but fuck me, that's the first. Bloody hell. How you make it out, Gordon. Is this a popular dish on the menu? Yes. Wow. So far, I don't think he's liked the food. Mm. What is that? Chop salad. Oh, chop salad, so excuse me. Look at that. What's that squashed into? Looks like it's been squashed into an ice cream cone. Oh, OK, that's it there. <laughs> right, that sits on top. Was the chef a mechanic? No. No. Aside from its appearance, it, people actually uh, enjoy it. You know, this is my house. He was in my house, and he was embarrassing me. OK. <laughs> Please don't make me eat any more of this shit. Take this out while this is still puffy, please. 
Oh, lovely. Thank you. Looks like someone's had a shit in the bag and stuck it in the oven. God, dear. Disappointment was written all over his face. He doesn't like any of the food so far. It's gross. Pretty gross. Basically told me everything was serving his shit. What'd you expect him to say? Everything was great? Every single dish he had sucked? You know, I, I can't help but get defensive. Risotto. The chef likes all these little mashed lamb lettuce. Sadly, it's hot and disgusting. The rice just purees in your mouth. It, like, sort of sticks to the roof of your mouth. Mm. Well, a Russian can't even cook a simple mushroom risotto. It's a big worry. Gordon didn't like the food. Didn't seem to like anything, so nobody's feeling too good right now. If you're gonna be a restaurateur, at least know what your food tastes like. I don't think this guy's got a fucking clue what his food tastes like. Okay, take a seat. Sure. Sit down. Right, um, that was interesting. Um, interesting, but bitterly disappointing. Is that canned crab? That's not fresh crab meat, is it? It's canned crab. When I asked very politely, is the crab meat fresh, the waiter told me, yes, of course it is. The waiter told you that was fresh crab meat? Yeah, that's why I ordered it. First one arrived stone cold. I'm sorry. Let's have a little taste there and, and eat that for me. Look at it, it looked like it'd come out of a baby's diaper. Huh? No one's gonna come back for that. That as a chopped salad. I mean, it's hideous. Let's have a taste of that. My eight-year-old daughter could cook better than that. Probably from anyone else, I would have threw the table over and threw them out. Honestly, your food's crap. He's a little harsh, and he got to be a little abusive on the food. Oh, shit. What the hell did we get into? If you think that you're going to continue running this business, serving that shit, you may as well turn this place into a museum. No one's going to come back for this. I was pissed. Real pissed. I wanted to take the plate and smash it on top of the chef's head. In order to fully understand all the issues of the Old Stone Mill, it's time to get tight-lipped Dean to open up. Um, these questions may not be comfortable, Dean, but unless I understand the full scenario, then I can't get this place back online. One thing I'd like to know is the financial situation. Are you aware of the current financial situation, Barbara? Um, he kind of keeps me in the dark a little bit. So. I don't want her to worry. No reason for her to share these anxiety and nerves that I have. Totally unnecessary. I try not to bring it up. It's always easier just to kind of not think about what's going on here, and that's probably one of the reasons why I don't come down very often to the restaurant because what you don't know can't hurt you. I just choose not to deal with it right now. I'll let him deal with it. Yeah, but if the house gets taken away and you lose that, then you've got every reason to be worried. I mean, the bottom line is you're losing money. Correct. Every week. Every week? Yes. If we had to close yeah. tonight, just switch everything off, Yeah. what would we owe? Half a million. Half a million? Yeah. It wouldn't be good for our marriage, I don't think, if he would risk, you know, everything that we possibly had in the world. You got money tied up in the home, oh, mortgage-wise? Oh, sure. A mortgage, a second mortgage, and a home equity line. God, so that's backed up big time. Yeah. How do you manage in terms of getting through month to month in terms of mortgage payments, suppliers, salaries? Your salary. What do you want me to say? It's, 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 you know, I'm in hell right now. Please don't get upset. I know. I no, no, I no. But I, no I it's, just... it's crucial for me to understand exactly where we are. No, I know. I've got to be really frank and honest. That's why you're here. Nothing is more telling to Gordon than observing a full dinner service. Fortunately, it's Saturday night, the one night the restaurant is busy. Hi, how are you? All right. Well, enjoy you your dinner. Much. Hi, folks, how are you? I know you'll be happy with that, and can't go wrong. Tonight, I am on the edge, because now the fear of failure is setting in. The cashew chicken. Prime rib, medium rare. As orders begin to arrive in the kitchen, 
fried calamari, chopped salad, crab cakes, one prime rib, medium rare, two cashew chicken. Chef Michael is clearly frustrated. Did you see anybody run a line by themselves? Uh, not like this before, no. Huh? You know, it's just me, and you have to get it done, you get it done. It's not easy when you're by yourself. It really isn't. No, I'm not saying it is easy. No. Michael works more than is expected of a normal chef. He does above and beyond. As Chef Michael continues to fight the battles alone in the kitchen, Nice to meet you, Lisa. Owner Dean and manager Tom are in their own world in the front of the house. Just another day in paradise, huh? Hi, how are you? Perfect. I think I might have a beer with you. Oh, really? Cheers. Cheers. Say the truth. There is no place like this in Pennsylvania. There's no place uh, like home. Uh, as the manager here, I do whatever it takes to keep the place running as smoothly as possible. And where's your strengths? Your strengths in what? Hopefully the entrees will come soon. Right. They should be. An hour into dinner service, and the overly embellished dishes finally emerge from the kitchen. Mike tries to presentate the food real nice. What's this crack here with the calamari in the martini glass? They're just trying different presentation because the the dishes we have suck. Suck? I can't believe you've been so fucking polite. Holy mackerel. I don't even know what to tell you. And neither Gordon or the customers are impressed. I think my is too much garlic. OK. Is it cold? Is there enough sauce on these cashew chickens? Yes, there is. When it just becomes a job, not that you don't care, not that you don't put in the effort, but it's just the same shit every day. By the way, the, 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 the paper's edible. I've never had my dinner served to me in a brown paper bag. I don't know why the fries are looking remarkably shitty tonight. In your business right now, yeah. I wish that was the only problem, a fucking french fry. Is it cold? Send it back. Send it back, yeah. Excuse me. Are they OK? OK. Just OK? Just OK. Just OK. With food now being sent back to the kitchen, already behind, Michael is now totally overwhelmed. I need a risotto and a tilapia, and that's done. And Dean is not helping the problems, but adding to them. I got backed up because there was too much at once. Oh, my god. Overcooked. Come on, come on. Get this to, get this to 28, Boo Boo, right now. Mikey, the risotto. It's overcooked. God damn it. You got me very frustrated. Let the customer wait. If he waits 20 minutes and he's happy, or he waits 20 minutes and gets crap, what's worse? Let him wait 20 minutes and be happy. Give me that dish, man. Please send it out right now. Michael. Yes, sir. Are you happy with that risotto? Not really, chef, no. Michael, if you're not happy with it, why'd you serve it, my man? Chef to chef now. What? Forget, forget, forget Dean. Where's, where's the tilapia? That's huh? what I want right in now. In the oven. Yeah. Dean, he's the owner. Ultimately, it's his decision. Hey. Yeah. Right now, I just want to get people their food. You What's the matter question? with this? It's very salty. Mushroom risotto. I'm going to try some. Your risotto thing is disgusting. Yeah, you should send it back. Does it make you feel better if we rush this to the table? No. I'm trying to ask the chef about some form of standard, and you're just like, get the fucking shit out of here. Because there. the lady asked me three times for her food. Yes. I'm amazed. You know that more than anything. I don't know. I don't know what you, I don't know what you want me to say to you. Your restaurant is on the ass. That's what I'm. But it's done. About. It's done, Gordon. It's done. I love the facade you put across it. You know, it's that. not a facade. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah. And actually, we were just going to ask you about the risotto. Um, I think it's really salty. I don't really like the taste of it at all. It's okay. Sorry, no. It's okay. Thank you, risotto. What did they say? It was a little salty. Salty. They sent back your favorite dish, the risotto. Dean's willingness to send out substandard risotto typifies what's wrong with the Old Stone Mill. In addition, a great deal of Dean's energy has gone into beautifying the restaurant. But the menu has been neglected. I don't think you understand the real reason why I'm here. The inconsistency of the food is obvious. The food needs some serious attention, and yet no one seems to address it. I asked Michael, are you happy with the risotto? He said, no. And you said, no, I've got to serve it. I've got to serve it. They'll be waiting 50 minutes. Have you any idea how much damage you're causing? 
What do you want? What, what do you well, it's want? It's not about what I want. It's just what I'm... I'm miffed. I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. You know that? It's one thing to believe in a dream, but it's another thing to actually be in a dream world. For every plate of food we send, we're narrowing the chances of this place becoming successful. And I think you bully them into making sure that they get brainwashed to how you think. Well, let me tell you something. What you think is wrong. It's tough to get poked at all day. I feel like poking back right now. I'm trying to get through to you. So I can't get through to you, I've got no chance. I think you're treating this like a game. How dare you accuse me of not having a commitment? Dare you? I don't dare you. I'm telling you. You're not telling me anything. You, this is your own figment of your imagination that I don't have a commitment to this place. Dean's a fighter. He's not going to back down from a challenge. You just give me two minutes, you guys. Would you mind? You float on the customers coming round, blowing smoke up your ass. That's right, I do. When I ask people how their food is and they tell me it's good, it makes me feel good. I don't rovel around my customers kissing. How was it? Please tell me. You don't go to the table and ask people how their meal was? Or no, you, you probably pay 10 people no, to go to the no, table. No, I listen to the, the phone every morning to see how fucking yeah. fully booked I am. This is what to I get stand. paid to do. To stand in here. That's what, what I get paid to do, to, to stand, stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And That's what I get paid and for. watch this shit come out. No. That's and your don't opinion. feel good about it. No, I don't feel good there about it. There you go again. That's my opinion. I don't opinion. feel good about it. You fucking do. That's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? You're not facing like a fucking man? It's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Well, fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Uh, you're full of shit. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? You're not facing like a fucking man? I face everything like a man. I don't you shy do. away from nothing. That's right. Nothing. Nothing. Not you. Nothing. I have a commitment to this place that you'll probably never have to any place in your life, ever. What? Did I stutter? I just told you how I feel about this place. I'm not gonna suck your dick to make you believe me. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. You don't like the truth, Dean. No, no I do like the you. truth. No one's burst your truth. fucking I hear, bubble. I hear the truth of my life more than you'll ever hear the truth Bullshit. of your life. Yeah, that's what you think. You take pride in your hair, your trousers, your shirt. You, you, you're well-groomed. I just want you to take pride in what the fuck you do in a business. And if you applied what you applied in yourself each and every day, you won't be serving that shit. Right now, we've got some issues in here. And unless you're prepared to change, this place has got no chance. And you've had it all your own fucking way for such a long time. And it's not going to continue being like that. One thing that has to change instantly, you. Ironically, it's Dean's fear of failure that is preventing him from making the necessary changes for success. But before Gordon can put his plan for change into action, he decides to explore the local competition. Italian, Chinese restaurant, next door to Pizzeria, an American bistro. How weird, another Italian. Restaurants everywhere. Another Italian, my God. How are you? Very good. Good to see you. You too. And what a beautiful little shop. Thank you very much. Busy little place? Very busy. Fantastic. So the great meat eaters here? Yes, they are. They yeah. love their steaks, and they like them thick. Been up and down the street, there's not one steakhouse anywhere. No, there isn't. Why is no one ever open one here? Ah, uh, I don't know. But if there was a steakhouse locally, you could supply it? It would be a pleasant change. Well, listen, thank you. OK, Good sorry. to see you. Have a good weekend. OK. Thank Chef. you, Paul. Chef, thank you again. Take care. OK, sir. Nice. Now armed with local knowledge, Gordon knows that to turn this restaurant around, he must get the chef back on track. Michael, this restaurant needs to be known for something. First big change, prime rib. Prime rib. On the bone. OK. This is a special to get this place in the right direction, okay. to make your life easier and to make service quicker. I am very nervous. It's not every day that you get to cook with a world-class chef. You know how to slice it from there, don't you? Down and all up. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and put that beef in, yeah? I'm excited to learn those new dishes. And then after time, just put my own spin on them and hope he doesn't come back and throw me under the bus. The idea behind the chopped salad is having that little bit of crunch there, yeah? Romaine, 
shredded, a few chives, a little bit of bacon in there. Half dressed so it stays nice and crunchy. A little seasoning on the avocado, your tomato, chopped egg, a few chives. <laughs> Whee! Meltdown. OK. <laughs> yes? Oh, just think of the complaints. What? You're not stuffing my salad in a funnel? What do you mean you're not serving me a funnel salad? Mike, you all right with this? I'm you're fine working. with that. I left my ass off. When he burned those funnels with the creme brulee torch, I left. And, and I understood his point. There's nothing wrong with a simple salad. Don't try and make it anything that it's not. If they come and ask me for their salad to be stuck inside a funnel, I will personally lift them and put them next door in the retirement home. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Last of the fucking funnel. With the chef re-energized, Gordon turns his attention to the owner and his team. Dean has always had the desire to succeed. Now Chef Ramsay is about to tell him how to do it. OK, I've done my homework. I've been out and about, and I fucking, I, I've studied hard. What isn't in the town? There's not one good steakhouse anywhere in this town. This place has got every chance of becoming a phenomenal steakhouse. Chef Gordon's idea of a steakhouse would really work here. He's 100% right that there is nothing else in the area. Give the locals what they want and get them come in time and time again and make money. I'm listening to Gordon. I'm listening to everything he said. And he's making all these changes. But when the changes are done, I don't know if he's going to get people through the door. This place oozes steakhouse. I cannot tell you. Look forward to it. How did you sit? I can't afford to make many changes because I can't afford to alienate or lose what I have right now. I'm fuming. Dean, give me a little bit of manhood. I'm not insane. I had a vision. You cooked a simple prime rib? That was your resurrection of the place, was a simple prime rib. Hey, I'm sorry, I've got sir. 12 successful rations, highly profitable, and you, my man, missed out on a fucking trick. When you change concepts, when you change direction so radically, I think that's a sign of weakness. Tomorrow, we're changing the menu. We're going to relaunch the restaurant. You've got some serious thinking to do. Good night. It's day four, relaunch day, and time for Dean to embrace the changes that will hopefully save his restaurant. Gordon secretly has brought in his design team who worked through the night to spruce up the Old Stone Mill. You know when I first arrived here, yeah? I drove by this beautiful building without actually realizing it was a restaurant. No sign. No. Nothing. Let's have a look, yes? Yeah, man. One, two, three, up. Look at it. Oh, Beautiful. A natural stone, the old stone mill Look steakhouse. Now we know what the place is when we drive by. When they unveiled the sign, it was just absolutely beautiful. I was breathtaking. Dean, do you like it? I love it. Huh? It's great. Very nice. Look next to it. Yeah. Steakhouse. Yeah. Why didn't I do it? Call the sign guy, work out a barter with him, do a trade, do something, and get the sign. I could have. I don't know why. Right, let's go inside. There's more. History. This is all the stuff that's been upstairs that you've been kept away. So when customers aren't waiting, you know, they can get a, an insight to what you've done. I want people to know from the first minute they walk in here that your heart is in here. I was a little intimidated when I first walked in because I didn't know what to expect. Every nook, every bloody piece of stone, look, the history's there. Gordon putting up these pictures of me building the place blew me away. OK, there's more. Come through. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow, now everybody can see everybody. Oh, so it's lovely. Sweet. It's just beautiful. I can't even put it into words. It's open. It's classic. We've got new plates, new linen, new tableware. Barbara, what do you think? Gorgeous. I got rid of the dark colors. Too depressing. Yes. Too depressing. The candles on all the tables, the fresh flowers. It's just bright. It's cheery. It's a place you want to be. I'm speechless. Uh. <laughs> I'm speechless. The same restaurant, the same people, but something is different. We have Gordon Ramsay's touch. Mm, smell. Mm. <laughs> mm. Let's see if it works. It has to work. 
is there now. There's no fucking excuse. We've got rid of the clutter. Look at it. Looks great. Huh? Looks great. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know any of this involved any kind of a makeover of any sort. But um, I'm man enough to admit that it's great. Even though the improvements to the decor are well received, that was an easy change to accept. Now for the hard one, the new steakhouse menu. OK, let's, uh, let's go through the food very, very quickly, yes? Menu. Let's start off with the um, meats. That's the porterhouse steak for two. You've got the most amazing ribeye. Next to that, you've got the New York strip, the most popular steak across America. I expected a blend of the old and new, but changing the menu completely surprised me the most. Halibut has a really nice sort of rustic, meaty flavor. You know, it's a very robust fish, but pan seared is beautiful. And then the crispy skin salmon, spaghetti of squash, confit shallot, and a really nice crispy skin, yes? OK, the appetizers. Um, steamed mussels, nice big bowl, and then the cream corn. Every steakhouse across the States has got cream corn on there. And then my favorite, the Old Stone Mill chopped salad. Sadly, no funnel. This is going to be a challenge, but uh, it's very exciting to have a new menu. With two hours to go before the doors open, Gordon wants to make sure the restaurant feels like the steakhouse in town. And before anyone eats any food, it will be up to the front of the house staff. This is now a steakhouse. We're going to confirm it. Each and every table that arrives this evening, a quick presentation. Bingo. Tom, sell it to me. My worries are that the food's changed, the aesthetics have changed, but I still have my dysfunctional staff. Hello. Welcome to the Old Stone Mill Steakhouse. Here are the steaks we have this evening. This is our... our 21-day aged... <sighs> Let's go. We have a... I'm completely out of my comfort zone. You can't expect to win the gold medal in a week. And on the top, a Kobe strip. Oh, come oh, on up. A Kobe strip. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking Japanese lap dancing bar. <laughs> it's still the same mediocre crew in there. God almighty! Gordon has introduced a lot of changes to the Old Stone Mill in just a few days. And with their heads still reeling, it's time for Dean and his staff to rise to the occasion. Hello, how are you? We're excited about tonight. We're hoping this goes over well for us. Can I take your card? What do you think about the new look? Gorgeous. It's a new start. I'm exhausted. I'm emaciated. I'm tired. I'm anxious. Are you nice tonight? Yeah? I'm sure hope so. I was a little nervous going into it, not knowing a menu at all, only seeing it maybe at, at two hours before we were supposed to start. Not being ready is always a fear. OK, this is the big night. We put a plan together, and now they have to seriously execute it. Kobe beef medium rare. I, 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 I'm stuck. I'd like to know where all the menus are. If people drop the ball tonight, you won't see them here tomorrow. Tonight is the night of the big relaunch. Gordon Ramsay's plan for a steakhouse to fill the void in this town has generated some buzz. Is that the mayor? And the restaurant is fully booked. Now it's up to Dean and his staff to start building a new reputation for the Old Stone Mill. Everybody is on their tippy toes. The mayor, now where does the big shot go? Tonight will certainly be an indication of the probability of success for this place. Hey, hello. Hi. Mr. Mayor. It's a long time no see. <laughs> I, I was a little intimidated when he first walked in because he's important to me to be here. Take your coat. Oh, thanks. When this place is full and the mayor's here, if you're not ready, well, I don't care how good you are. Come on. It's not going to work. With the customers and special guests taking their seats, the servers are busy making their rounds with the new menu. Have the Kobe. The Kobe beef. Medium well. And it's obvious the pressure of the relaunch is already getting to Tom. New York Strip. No, I'm sorry, the New York Strip, the ribeye, and our Kobe beef special. <laughs> OK. It was crazy. I mean, this whole situation is crazy. And the whole night, obviously, from the beginning, was going to be crazy. Woo! Get some napkins. Oh, done. I'm fucking done. Tom. I'm not comfortable with the changes so quick when I don't know if we're ready for it. Yeah, Too much brother. for me right now. I just need. We need I'm you. Sorry, I'll be fine. We, I really will. We fucking need you. 
while Tom tries to pull himself together. Or you dry your eyes, I, I come back as the fucking manager, Tom. Okay. Okay. The first wave of orders hits the kitchen. Okay, Michael, watch your temperature, yeah? I don't want the steaks coming back. Okay? Yes, yeah, chef. Sure. Good. Eight. Party of eight, who's eight? Whatever eight, eight comes in. There was plenty of pressure. A couple of times I lost my composure. Let's go. Let's go. Jeannie, the customer, not cattle. And when Tom does return, he begins to feel the heat once again. What's that smell? It's hot as hell in here, isn't it? Yes. Who's that? It's hot in that kitchen. <laughs> I'm concerned about Tom. He's sweating like a pig. What and I don't know what to say. I'll drive if you had too much. Don't you worry. Come on. I've got a problem. Quick, now. Right, you're running around like a fucking blue ass fly. Yeah, you're fucking sweating like a pig. Get in the bathroom and do something about it. When Tom came back, you could see he was just totally disordered, like disarranged. He, you know, he was nervous. He was nervous. God, it stinks. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and though all appears to be going well, it melts like butter, tastes like oh. Only a few customers have been served, and the mayor is not one of them. They've got a meltdown down there, yeah. and the uh, mayor, yeah, we can't keep him waiting. Yep. Yeah. Does Michael know that that's the mayor's table? What table number is that? Uh, that's 12. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure he knows. Do you understand? I need the mayor's table, man. I'm not getting tickets through this printer right now. Why? I don't know. This printer right here is not working? I am not getting tickets through this computer. It's going to fuck me up. No, the printer's working. Oh, boy. It was a disaster. I've already spoken to Dean about that. And then I finally screamed, cursed, and yells, get someone in here to fix this now, or we're fucked. I can't believe that no one's coming in here to fix this fucking computer. But if nobody wants to hear it, nobody wants to hear it. How about those steaks? <laughs> How about those steaks? He's fucking standing there with his finger up his ass. I don't know if Dean understands. It'll sink the whole night. And you'll be done. Oh, God. Now we're seriously in the shit. All the orders are backed up, tables are waiting, Tom switched off, and more importantly, we've kept the mayor waiting 45 minutes. Of all the people to keep waiting, not the fucking mayor. Christ. Now more than an hour and 15 minutes into service, and hungry customers are getting restless. So Okay, Michael, what I need is the fucking mayor now. Someone has to fix this computer, because I'm not getting tickets. Unbelievable. Get me fucking Dean, yeah, please. Straight away, yes? Dean, we have to go in the kitchen. I need the mayor's table, man. I don't know. It's a fucking hour. It's not easy getting kicked in the nuts every day and being told that you suck. I'm fucking embarrassed, man. Where? I told you this. I don't have tickets for this. Why aren't I getting tickets for this? Please help me. I don't Rip have the rail. ticket is what I'm saying. But it fucking it This is the copy. You got to have the other hand. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket. It's the last fucking table. I need the mayor's table, man. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket! Oh, fucking hell, here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket! It's the last fucking table! Prime oh, for the love of fucking Christ. Ginny, two seconds, yeah? Don't worry about the fucking coffee. Mike. Mike, just come around for two seconds, please, yes? With dinner service on the brink of disaster, Gordon lays it on the line for Dean and his staff. Let's regroup a little bit, yeah? Let me just tell you the situation. Service is gone. We're all over the place. Let's get this thing back online. We've got to make decisions, especially at this critical moment. All right. This is where I need you now to fight back. This is going to make or break this place. I was really, really pissed off. But right now, for the sake of the success here, 
I have to just get through it. Let's get some appetizers. I'll pump those out real fast, and then we'll get you in there for your entrees. You know what? I will be right back, and I will wrap those up for you. You know, at this point now, let's work together. Let's correct it. Let's try to correct it. Sorry for the delay. Give me a steak knife, please. The printer's working. Good deal. That's good, good deal. Nana. Good deal. Two medium rare. Two medium. Give me that. It's 34. Well, bon appetit. I certainly hope it was worth the wait. Excellent. And thankfully, Dean gets everyone focused. There you go. Thank you. And the night at least finishes successfully. The next day, Gordon wants to make sure that Dean's fear of failure would no longer stand in the way of his potential success. What really pisses you off the most? What is it? I know this place is, could be a raving success, and I'm not being blind, and I'm not in the fucking dream world. The fascinating thing about you, Dean, is that you're, you're scared of failure. Walk a mile in my shoes, and then we'll talk. I failed before in business. When? When I opened a restaurant up in my hometown, thinking I was the dog's bollocks. And it made me the person I am today, having both success and failure. Don't be scared. You can't keep on sidestepping problems. But I really believe that he's doing it for my career now. I really believe him. Perhaps deep down, I knew that I needed to change, and I can't overlook things anymore. You can't tiptoe over it. This is your business. You're right. I got to implement changes to make this work this time. I can't wait any longer. With a fresh, new, open-minded attitude, Dean masterfully took control of the front of the house there we go. Is having the filet mignon? and the back of the house. That prime rib looks to die for right there. This is the steak for real steak eaters. Tom started to gain the confidence he needs in his role as manager. Did they get you drinks yet? You go yeah. Yes. You good? Yeah. Okay. And Michael has rekindled his passion for cooking. Showtime, ladies. And to honor the Old Stone Mill's 200th birthday, Gordon organized a celebration party for the community. And for you, we'd like you to hang this also, the wow. key to the city wow. of Yonkers. Wow. wow. Getting the key to the city blew me away. I'm excited for my husband because I see the smile back in his face. It's a push. Get away from me, Gordon. <laughs> The local news even took notice, putting the restaurant back in the spotlight. Come and enjoy a steak at the Old Stone Mill. And the new steakhouse menu was just what this community needed and wanted. This is very nice. It's fantastic. It was excellent. Finally, the food is now as stunning as the building that it's cooked in. The most important thing is the confirmation that it can work. The potential is staggering. Now that you know what to do, don't stop doing it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you, my darling. Yes? Pleasure. Thank you. In my heart, we're going to make it. We have to make it. Up high, down below, you're too slow. Now get to bed. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, he's such a blessing to our family that we could never ever thank him enough for all that he's done for us. I arrived, I found the place, finally. I thought it was beautiful. Now, I think you got something fucking phenomenal on. Now I have something to really be proud of. Thanks. Huh? Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about what the future holds here. Yeah, do me a favor. Snip outside and have a quick look at the front of the restaurant. Oh, shit. <laughs> How do they do it? Where is it shooting from? Wow. I've wanted to sign up there for forever. I'm just overwhelmed tonight. That is so cool. Yes, Lisa, how are you? With Dylan's. This is an American-Irish restaurant with an Indian-ness connected to it. It's hard for me to believe that Dylan's has lasted this long. OK. And you had eight people leave on you, yes? We kind of lurch between catastrophe and disaster. My wife, my family, we started this restaurant to make a new life 
but uh, the restaurant is not doing that well. Dylan, good evening. How can I help you? I hired Martin to take care of this business. I had an objective. The idea was to capture the best of all worlds. Who are we choosing from? We have beef buna. Which menu? Lamb chop, shepherd's pie. It's the wave of the future. Hamburgers. Indian diners will be everywhere. <laughs> I think people are a bit confused as to, like, what kind of restaurant this is. I don't know what each manager does specifically. I'm the general manager. I'm the operations manager. And I'm a floor manager here. Nobody really knew Khan was a manager. He doesn't do anything yet. I don't like to work here because everything is so messed up. I think in an ideal world, Martin would be an ongoing character in a reality TV series. Martin. My responsibilities include uh, an awful lot of things. I make sure that everything runs. If something's broken, I fix it. I make sure that there's toilet paper to wipe your butt with. Frequently, I will have to cook something because the cooks who make the Indian food don't know how to make American food. If we get customers in here, I will walk up to tables, serve them their food, and they'll be swatting flies away. It is disgusting. The kitchen's not clean. The problem has been eradicated now. I think it has. Where's the fly? For the last six months, we are losing like twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month. I cannot continue losing money like this. I don't want to continue with this nightmare. I will do anything and everything what Gordon Ramsay asked me to do to make this place as successful. Ironically, Gordon's successful New York restaurant is only two blocks away from this kitchen nightmare. Dylan's with a canopy all taped out, and what the fuck is that sign there? It's like a scoreboard. Morning. Hello. Gordon Ramsay. Martin, general manager. This is Dylan's. Welcome. Dylan's Indian restaurant. Indian restaurant, yes. Doesn't Indian sound Indian. like an Indian, does it? Dylan's? No. No. Dylan's, no. When I first met Gordon, I seemed to be a fairly intimidating guy, and that's exactly what he was. Mohammed Islam, the owner of the place. Mohammed, how are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Jenna. <laughs> Jenna, nice to see you. Gordon definitely has a presence about him. I don't know whether or not I should be terrified or just relax and go with everything. This is Andrew, Andrew operation Andrew. manager. General manager, operation manager. Yes. yes. Uh, one rocky table. Trust you to pick the worst table in the house. Let's sit at this table, shall we? Yes. Yeah. OK, good. Flies it, didn't we? Uh, Martin. Yes. Um, we're such a huge menu. Mm. Uh, am I right in thinking there's two kitchens? There's two different chefs in one kitchen. They work alongside each other. British, Italian, Buffalo. Yes. The only thing that's not on here is Chinese. Are you normally this busy for lunch? Oh, actually, it's a little busy today. <laughs> we don't have people coming in because they see an empty restaurant. Sometimes I don't get a table at all. From the main menu, assorted vegetarian appetizers. And then for main course, the lamb biryani and beef buna. From the American menu, I'll go for the salmon sauce. Please, thank you. You're welcome. God, I'm lonely. I need the appetizers first. Are you OK? I'm quite excited to see the reaction. We've got, like, great service, great food, so it's a win-win situation. The walls are ghastly. Looks like it's been plastered with hospital linen. That's where the customers go after they come out of this restaurant. Of course there's no fucking salmon. Why would there be fucking salmon? When Gordon Ramsay ordered his lunch, he must have looked into a fucking crystal ball because he ordered something that we didn't have. Let me just make sure that I can order something that they don't have. That looks great. Frozen fucking fish or a great chef. Right. There's two fritters. Those ones both are vegetable. They're both vegetable? Yes. May the Lord above not poison me. Amen. In terms of beauty, it's not exactly an Indian classic, is it? It looks like a dehydrated turd. There's meat in there. Um, that one's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. If he were a vegetarian, I would expect a lawsuit. It's going to be fun to ask them about. You guys are killing me right now. The sorted vegetarian appetizer plate has to be vegetarian. Vegetarian? He okay. just had a meat one. 
Knock on wood, the worst is over, right? OK. Beef Puna. Beef Puna. And a lamb biryani. Lamb biryani. And she's bringing a plate for you. Thanks, darling. Would you, uh, would you mind getting me a clean one, please? Always worries me when they stick tomato roses on top of food and when the tomato is rotten. <laughs> that is not a piece of beef. Does that look like a piece of beef to you, my darling? It's dry. It looks like pork. And if that's beef, then hey, I was born in Bangladesh. Gomez. He says to try this. It's Great. pork. Wait. Pretty sure it's pork. Is it beef? It is lamb. Pork. No. Yeah. It was lamb. <laughs> so now it was lamb. Gordon didn't seem to enjoy much of anything, and that's how it usually goes with customers. Where do you start on this one? Potatoes are sick, Martin. They look like they were cooked at least a week ago. Well, that's good. And frozen salmon, too. Andrew, that's Thank good. You. You have come to the rescue once again. One of the greatest chefs in the world wants something to eat, and I had to make it. Thank you. So this is from the American kitchen. Looks like a doormat. Another fly. Huh? Is this normal? Um, yes, it is. Who made this? Um, I did. So you're the operations manager, you're... Yes. The chef as well? Yes. We haven't got any other chefs in the back that can cook this food. They don't know how to cook any Western-style food. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Either. Not with pleasure. Pretty much everything that could go wrong went horribly and catastrophically wrong. Oh, God. Callus Juice. Yeah. Please to meet you. Gordon, tell him in a really nice way. Yeah. Your food is shit. The last time you food is shit, you not do anything. Food was bland. Old-fashioned. I've eaten it. I don't feel too good. What do you think of the lamb? What do you think of the says that uh, that lamb is probably the old lamb. You serve me old lamb? I am embarrassed to see the situation. What is the mistake we sir? They get a little nervous as they made a mistake in there. Made a mistake? Maybe the standard cotton has a very high compared to mine. I didn't expect it's going to go that bad. After Gordon's lunchtime fiasco, he now tries to understand how this restaurant is managed. No, I'm not worthy of sparkling water. I have to have tap water here. Are we going to reset this table? Eeny, meeny, mine and moe, catch your manager by the toe. You are what? Look, you're the floor manager. Floor manager. Holy mackerel. When I came to work, I was nervous, but at the same time, I was happy because I have a chance to work with Chef Renzi. That's why you're here, <laughs> so you can fix the place. You think it's that funny and easy to do? Everybody here hates Khan, and I can't fire the guy because he's protected by Muhammad. Now, we have a floor manager, operations manager, and general manager. I was resting, just thinking of various things I've got to sort out. And one of the waitresses was rubbing my hair. It was a natural thing. How many managers does this place need? I found a new manager. We now have a floor manager, and amongst the operation manager, that's managed by the general manager. Three fucking managers, and they're all shit. Dear, oh dear. With a better understanding of the staff structure, it's time for Gordon to see the staff in action at a dinner service. Welcome. Nice to see you all. Are you used to looking over the menu? Well, we were just sort of debating yeah. whether we wanted something on the American side or on the Indian side. The Indian's very good. Where are we choosing from? Which menu? It's also becoming clear to Gordon that the multiple styles of menu is not a positive, but a negative. Well, I'm just going to go with my gut. I'll go with the same thing. Yeah. I'll get the non please. <laughs> OK, you ready? OK, Farouk. Oh, fucking holy Moses. Oh, dear. Fuck me. Lift it off the floor and don't put it on the floor. Hello, madam. Floor manager, operations manager, general manager. Anybody? Mohammed, can you explain to Gomez? Yes. Yeah? 
that we've got to stop putting things on the floor. Yes? It's unhygienic. Unhygienic and it could be dangerous too. It's very dangerous. Yes. Dear, dear, dear. It's 40 minutes into the service, and unbelievably, no food has left the kitchen. My first table still hasn't gotten their entree. I just don't understand what's taking so long for all this food. One of the major reasons for the delay, kitchen chaos. This is the first table in this restaurant, and they're just... They're already done. No. I only give him that the salad. Who's in charge here? I'm taking over expediting here. You're expediting? Yes. Mohammed, what are you doing in here? I'm trying to help them up. You've got three managers, two chefs, eight girls out the front, and no one yeah. can fucking delegate. Oh, my God. OK, kids, one order of salmon left, one salmon special. Let everybody know. And when information is shouted from the kitchen, Martin is busy again, not with customers, but with his phone. Oh, my God. OK, that has to be ready before this goes up. Ultimately, Martin doesn't belong in a leadership position. Tell the manager on the floor to do something about it. This place is running in chaos. It's totally dysfunctional, and there needs to be leadership here. So what are you cooking tonight? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, Get me the general manager, Martin, please. All right. Not your Martin! Gordon Ramsay was really getting under my skin. OK, right. Uh, this young man's here, he's standing here, and he hasn't got anything to cook. Is this how you run a place? No, I don't, I don't run a place like this, all right? Why did it take me to let you know that he's standing there playing with radishes? Because, um... I you were busy. Uh, that's a horrible thing to say, but I was busy at the front there, yes. Oh, oh. He was alluding to my relationship with the waitresses. Yeah, you get off on it. Girl stroking your hair, <laughs> massaging your fucking ego. You're such a fake. Not oh, fake, I'm just... Why, why are you saying I'm a fake? You've got members of your team standing here getting paid doing fuck all. I've never met a general manager so shit as you. Okay. If this was your money, would you let him stand here playing with no. his dick? That's what you're doing here, isn't it? You're riding Mohammed, you know. You're skinning that poor man. Yes, you fucking are. You're taking advantage of a weak, rich man. That's what's just fucking clicked in my mind. He got personal. He was accusing me of riding Mohammed, this type of thing. And that got me, because how the hell have you got the right to say something to me that you don't even know me? We've got more staff than customers tonight, and we still can't get it fucking right. General manager. General Toffpot. What is going on back there? This is seriously the worst service I've ever had in the city. An hour and a half into dinner service, and only a few dishes have made their way to customers who are not exactly thrilled with Dylan's dining experience. This is Rob. Thank you very much. I don't like eating with flies swarming around me. And those who haven't received food are getting ready to leave. In two minutes, we're leaving. And, you know, we ask, like... Seriously, two minutes, we're leaving. What else I can do for you right now so that will make you happy? Tell me that. You tell me. I'm sorry, ladies. I can discount your bill. You can go. This is It's day two, and Gordon has already been appalled by the food and dismayed by the inadequate management. Time to do the thing I've been dreading most, yeah? Getting into the kitchen. I am not looking forward to this part. When were these changed last? Uh, that one, he... Well, at least the no. flies look fresh. Oh, my god. I have no idea why is the flies. There was a lot of flies here. What is that? I don't know what it is. You don't know? Moldy. That is, quite frankly, the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, my God. These were my fucking potatoes for lunch. Will you do me a favor? Yes. Eat that. Thank God I sat the little fucker down to eat them. That's not a potato. Green chicken. What goes on down here? What's that smell? For Please God's speak. sake! Look at that! Look! Cockroaches. Holy shit! Oh, my God. That is the worst hamburger I've ever seen in my entire life. Having discovered the terrible conditions in the kitchen, Gordon now ventures down to the basement of the restaurant to check out what's lurking below. 
What's that smell? What? What is that? Is that for rats or mice? Food for the catch a rat. So we have got rats here. Rat is all over the place. It's rat droppings. Look at them all, everywhere. Rats. Rats. Oh, my good God. Look at the cockroaches. Oh, my God, look. I've got one in my fucking hair. It's cockroaches. Box is full of them. Look. Look at them all. Oh, my God, look. There they are, there, in refrigeration. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Look at that! Oh, my God. Look at them. There you go. There you go. I was shocked. It's like a nightmare. Look, Mohammed. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even a pepper. It's rotten. I'm worried about the flies in the dining room. I know where they're fucking breeding now. Look at it. <laughs> I've eaten here. Come on. Martin. Uh, we all miss you. Hopefully see you soon. Take care. Bye. OK. Yeah, I need Martin urgently. He's a general manager, yes? Yeah, good. You're, you're needed right now. I'm needed right now? Yes. Needed in the kitchen urgently. Are you in charge of this? Are you responsible for this? That is the salad I had, lunchtime. I open the bag and bang, out comes the flies. Uh, gentlemen, it gets worse than that. It's green. It's beyond edible. It's disgusting. Look at the color of those chicken wings. Everything in there was putrid. How long has that been in there? Can Give I... me an answer, because yes. I'm shitting myself. Yes, uh, there's a head chef responsible for this, trying to this rectify it. This will kill somebody. We're not passing the buck, but... I know my general manager knows what the fuck's going on in my fridges. Where are your standards? Our standards Look were... at it. Let me just tell you something. Yes. I've eaten here. Where's that from? Yeah. That's been sliced. That's gone out. What is that? Where's it? Hey, madam, where's that tomato gone? Look, it's fucking rotten, you fucking idiot. It's rotten. Has a customer just been served a slice of tomato? No, 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 no. So where is it? Oh, my God. Things are looking pretty glum. Look, 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 look. look. It's rotten, Mohammed. Tell him in your language you'll kill somebody. What do we need, a death in the restaurant before some fucker gets a grip? How many tables are out there? There's three. Three. You tell those three tables this is the luckiest day of their fucking life, OK? The only thing worse than having tables sent away is knowing that what I was going to serve them could make them sick. No one is getting served from this fucking restaurant tonight. Let's make that clear. Yes or no? Anyone against that? No. No. Good. That didn't go down too well. He was extremely angry, extremely pissed off. We are not ever again serving any of this food. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed right now? Out there and tell them the truth. Tell them now. Gordon was so outraged, so angry. I've never seen anything like it. From green burgers to fucking furry cucumber to fucking rancid potatoes. Out there. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry to inform you that we are not going to be serving dinner this evening. Chef Ramsay's shut down the kitchen. It's just disgraceful. I feel terrible that it's gotten to this point. I'm fucking speechless. It is a nightmare. This is so horrible, I should close down this place. This is worse than a nightmare. Gordon has encountered one of the most disgusting kitchens he has ever seen. Oh, my God. And so he must take serious action. Let's go. Fuck us. I want these guys to know I mean fucking business. A clean means a proper clean.
Right, you dirty little fuckers, where are you? I was just looking at him and thinking... OK, when I say clean, I mean clean, yeah? Guys, let's go. These guys are professional steam cleaners, yeah? Guys, kitchen straight through there. It wasn't just cleaners, it was cleaners plus. They're dressed like people from Star Wars, for God's sake. And you guys are doing it with them, yeah? Oh, God. Phase one of Gordon's mission, to seek out and destroy all moldy, rotten, and contaminated foods. We got work to do. The next phase of Operation Sterilize, steam clean every square inch of the kitchen. Now it's time to enlighten Mohammed and his managers with a little trip, a couple of blocks away to the kitchen of Gordon's New York restaurant. OK, I want to show you something. The difference between night and day. This is a kitchen. Have a look around. All the kitchens should be like this. Gordon's Kitchen is absolutely spectacular. No matter what size restaurant you are, you can keep a clean shop and you can keep it organized. Open the fridge door, Martin. We went to the London. That was a walk of shame. Twice a day, these fridges are cleaned. This is heaven. That was hell. In order to reach out to the local Indian community and New Yorkers at large, Gordon has come up with his strategy for the menu, contemporary Indian cuisine. Does he know we're in Broadway? Where are we? New Jersey. No, no, no. New Jersey? No, 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 oh, no, no, no fuck no, no, me. No, no, no. Well, yeah, he doesn't even know we're in fucking New York. We are in New York restaurant, right? Right. With the salmon, we're going to make a bit of a broth. Broth. With coconut and tomatoes and onions. Right. The secret behind the scallop is nice and pink. It's okay. sweet. A little bit of curry powder. Yes? Yes. And then from there, just set it on top of the chutney. Pan-seared scallops, a walnut right. chutney, wonderful crispy salmon with a tomato, coconut, curry broth. He just opened my eyes to what can be done. Clean, modern way to serve Indian food. Very good. Look at me. Oh, jeez, give a cuddle. Fucking hell. OK, very, very good. Tell him it's only a scallop, yeah? We haven't lost our children. OK, OK, you can let go now. You can let go now? You can let fucking go now. OK, good. To help execute Gordon's menu makeover, he has enlisted the help of one of the top Indian chefs in New York City, Vikas Khanna. Good to see you, buddy. Are you well? I need you here to work with the team of chefs and to get this place back on the map. Yeah? It's a beautiful location. We are in the heart of Manhattan. We can do it here. Later in the night, Gordon's design team is brought in to dramatically transform the restaurant's interior and exterior. It's a new day. The tacky electronic sign is being removed, and the restaurant is given an authentic Indian name, Purnima, which means full moon. Follow me, let's go. Here we go. There we are, all blindfolded. Much to our chagrin, I'll tell you. OK, on the count of three, take off your blindfolds. One, two, three. Welcome. Wow. wow. Haven't they done an amazing job? Great job, amazing job. Mohammed, have a look from down here. It's like now you feel wow. you Wow. What a difference. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful. It has a nice, clean, crisp look. It looks now like it's been done by professionals the way it should. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Isn't it lovely? I'm happy to come into work now and not see the material. It's so much more than I thought it'd be. New chairs, new banquettes, new linen, new pictures. And it looks like something that is classy, yes? He just turned this restaurant from zero to 100. So we're going to go outside and have a quick look outside. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Oh, my god. god. So 
stand back a little bit. There's no confusion. The color's beautiful. Yes. I'm not going to miss that sign. I'm so glad to have it gone. It looks like a real restaurant again. The amazing job. After working through the night, Vikas is ready to present the new menu he designed with Gordon. The old menu has been replaced with classic Indian dishes that have a modern twist. Everything is done very simple according to American palate. I didn't know that Indian food like that existed. Kerala fisherman's curry, OK? That's a very basic curry. We move to the next dish. We have kadai shrimp here. After the trio, we have the chicken korma. We are using saffron, real saffron, for this flavor. Mr. Vikas is so cute. He is a magician to me. And then Gordon's recipe of saffron cauliflower. The menu reflects these values of freshness in food, vibrant flavors, and it's very approachable for everyone. With the kitchen, menu, and decor all in good shape, it's time for Gordon to turn his attention back to the staff. Big, big, big night, yes? This place is about to be relaunched properly. Tonight, it has to work. OK, what's your role for tonight, general manager? I'm in front of house. Um, I'll be meeting, greeting. Will you do me a favor? When the customers sit down, will you not sort of be so false when you jump on? Just sometimes I feel it's so in your face, it's intimidating for them. OK. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Watching your performance, I was like, tacky. Will you promise to keep your phone off in the middle of service? Will you promise to be attentive to staff needs when necessary? Yep. Will you attempt to act as a general manager for the first time ever stepping into this business? Yeah? I like like I always Will do, yes. Will you not yes. take it as your cafe and hangout area? That is a great morale booster before the opening of this amazing new restaurant. Will you actually treat it as a business? If you could try to make some yeah. improvement this evening, please? Yeah. Martin is not qualified for a GM. I don't see the confidence that he need. Martin's not full of shit. OK. You're giving him such a hard time, and yep. it's making me angry. I'm frustrated for the, the lack of respect this man has. That's with him, not with you. So would you mind keeping your nose out of my business? Don't try and interrupt me. Excuse me, this is a loyal worker. Then. Oh, here we go. No, I'm sorry. Here we go. You don't need your minion to try and convince me how good you are on the back of what I've experienced. Is that clear? Martin, please. Gordon, help us to achieve that one. An amazing are, job. Yes. yes. Let's prove ourselves we do the job right. Absolutely, definitely. And then we see this. Gordon, we did it. Thank you, Mohammed. I've been waiting for that for the last week. I'm really pleased that it came out. So now I want to see positivity from everybody. Absolutely everybody. And if there's anyone who doesn't think they can pull on the rope like that, look for a new job. It's the morning of relaunch, and Gordon has organized a plan to spread the word in Manhattan. It's a Purnima parade. Look at that. Wow, what a brilliant idea, uh, promoting Purnima restaurant. Off we go, and we'll jump on, yes? It's amazing. The girls, music, and the promoting ideas, all of them. Yeah, I love it, I love you. I'm Thank glad you. you're happy now. People were asking where the restaurant is, and it was nice to be able to do something together. We needed that more than anything because I think all of our spirits were so broken. <laughs> Indian restaurant! It's so romantic! All of a sudden, you've all come alive! My God! <laughs> it's only two hours to go until the doors open, and the restaurant is booking up. The future of Purnima rests greatly on tonight's reopening. Yes, I understand that, absolutely. For Muhammad, tonight is a golden opportunity, but he needs his staff to rise to the occasion. Hello, good evening. I will say this table right here. I've got a table right here for you. It is very exciting to see this restaurant at full again. The kitchen is under the strong leadership of Vikas. So he's going to bring the food. But Gordon will be keeping an eye on the general manager, Martin. Advertisers, everybody takes an eye. The success of Purnima depends on the teamwork. That's the crucial point of running Purnima. Uh, Martin. Yep. Give me the phone. Is it on? It's off. It's off. It's off. It's off. OK. Yes, sir. You ready for order? Some samosas, some scallops, and some chicken tikka. Yeah. One chicken tikka trio. This is the new style for Pranima. New decor, new menu, contemporary fresh, and how exciting. 
It's all fresh, all new, and wonderful. Everything's just going perfectly well, but shit, Martin's still here. Excellent. Nice atmosphere in the dining room. Nice atmosphere. That's the best of metal, Megan. Customers are responding well to the new menu, and the first wave of orders is now hitting the kitchen. Let's go. I need one lamb chop, medium rare, please. Piping hot, please. Take this, take this. We've got to turn some customers tonight. We've got to turn tables, yeah? It's good. It's really great. Cauliflower is great. But the chicken take was good. But as the orders start to pile in, Martin's lack of managerial skills start to show. So they want the lamb. Who? Uh, the ladies. The, yeah. And the wait staff becomes confused. Yeah. No, Can you give it to that table? Service, please. Can somebody take this, please? Which is causing disorder in the kitchen, and everything is starting to back up. Martin, Khan, the food's sitting here. No one's moving their ass. Yes, it's I getting cold and cold and cold. Oh my God! How'd that happen? I need another rice, please. Service, get me Martin, please. Yeah, quickly, yeah. Everyone's standing in it, Dunning. Can you get out the rice, please? Martin, could you sweep the rice then? We're rather everyone standing in it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to do something, yeah? So we don't have to send more food to the rats. That's great. Finally found a job. Oh, fuck it, no. Even on a night with a top chef at the helm, Martin's mismanagement of his waiters has caused problems in the kitchen, and the customers are paying the price. The bread was the best part. Oh, yeah, the bread was the best part. It's the only thing that was warm. Okay, we're now just starting to turn these first tables, but panic sets in. Customers are complaining about food being cold. And these staff are not used to being busy, especially like this. Cold, yeah, let's go. It's cold, because it's fucking lying around. This, take this, please. Service, please. I never served as many customers before. Who's running the restaurant? Martin! Good, yeah. Somebody ordered this 33. I'm not going to say anything negative about the restaurant, but I don't understand this restaurant. Let's go. On oh, there you go, rather than a big tray. Right, where are you going? What table? What was that for? Vacus. Vacus? Vacus. I don't think that, that Martin understands what a general manager really should be doing. Don't make any phone calls along the way. Straight to the table. Why is that rice going cold now? Why is it not being served? No, it's, it's actually burning, yes. It went out it's actually burning. I want the customer to experience it hot, not your yes, hand. No, 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 just, Customers are complaining awesome. about the food cold, my man. You took the meal out just now. I believe Gordon's trying to get me angry, tired, annoyed, or whatever, and I wasn't taking any part with that. Um, Gordon has seen enough of Martin's managerial incompetence and believes he may have found a solution. Be honest with me. Can you manage this place? Yes, I can. So stop blending in and yes. stand on your feet, OK? Yes, I can do that. I will try my best to convince Chef Ramsey that I can run this restaurant. Ready, guys? Ready, everything is ready, but I have one naan. One, one naan. One minute, one minute. I have right, to just put that. Right, just, just, no, no, no. Okay. I have to put That's it. That's OK. That's OK. Relax. With Khan taking the reins, food is finally making it out to the customers. Good man. Thank you. Excellent. Pour the water, use the tray, take it to the down there. Each and every time, table 44 need their all. Check. Perfect. All the best, brother. This is really good. Definitely try that. This is great. That's like a good yeah. price. Yeah. With Khan in the dining room and Vikas in the kitchen, the restaurant is beginning to run smoothly. It was a very, very good expense for me and my whole team, and then make me feel good. One, two, three. Tonight. I made over $100. I was so happy. Make sure you guys come back again, OK? Yeah. Okay. Take care. The grand opening of Purnima was bumpy in the middle, but finished on a high note. Uh, Mahama, can I have a quick review, please? However, Gordon knows his work is not done. This place can be phenomenal. The location is extraordinary. This is a new start. Exactly. You have to treat it as a new beginning. Um, of course. I mean, in a perfect world, I would sacrifice one of your managers 
to employ beakers. You cannot carry driftwood in your no. business. Out of the three managers, one has to go. Between you and I, Martin has an amazing way of manipulating you. And he's not worth his weight in terms of what he brings to the table. Hearing Gordon Ramsay say that to Mohammed, that makes me upset and angry. The frustration just boiled over. I'm going to see you tonight, yeah. tonight Mohammed. Yeah. I've never used you. I, I've respected you. Yeah. I'm proud of what we've done. I've never cheated you. Excuse and I take what, what, what's, what's going on? Oh, you're asking no, a manager for, for, for manager to leave. Come you're here. You're recommending. You're recommending. You are in, you're enough. Okay. I've had enough. Okay. Because okay. you've been insulting. Okay. You've been okay. accusing me of, 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 of chiefing this bad. Did you hear what I just said to him? Martin. So. Yes, let, let, let him go. Go on, get it out. No, I'm get off gonna, your chest. Just, but you, the first time since I met you, show me that you're a man. You've accused me of riding on this why man's you, shoulders. Why are you pointing like that? Because, you're not I, because like I'm angry, OK? You want to see passion? Good. I'm giving you passion. This person I've respected. Yeah. And you've had the audacity to accuse me of, like, taking his money... Riding off his back. Riding off his back yeah. is, 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 is what you've said. Well, that is disgusting. You have no right. You don't know that. What about you? What about you? I have nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You sat in it. It's rotten! Yeah. You ran it. You sat in it. Yes. You wasted it. Yes, I wasted yeah, it, yes. You encouraged it. You it wasn't always go. like this. We, it it you spiraled. Go to it shit. spiraled out of control, yeah. and I asked you, you to guilty. come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I Not guilty. You I have right. nothing to be guilty of. You what? Nothing. You sat in it. Yeah. You ran it. You sat in it. Yes. You wasted it. Yes, I wasted yeah, it. Yes. You encouraged it. You it wasn't always go. like this. We, it it, it spiraled. Go it shit. spiraled out of control. Yeah. And I you asked you guilty. to come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I'm not guilty. I'm not going to take this put down anymore. You have nothing to be guilty of. Listen, this is my last night. And you said it was your last night. I'm confused. Yes. Yes, this so is my last now. night. Why this is my me? last tonight. OK, please tell the owner, not me. This is my last night. I'm out of here. I quit. Jesus Christ. When Martin left, actually, I'm in shock. I didn't expect it's going to go that bad. I think Gordon Ramsay is full of piss. And I'm extremely angry, extremely pissed off. And I now turn my back and walk away. With the success of the relaunch and the change of management, Cornema has beaten the odds and is now looking to a bright future. In the following days, Purnima's contemporary Indian food and atmosphere continued to generate great buzz throughout New York City. I would say that that's chicken tikka masala would rival any chicken tikka masala in India. How did you like it with it? It was really good. The restaurant's revenue increased, and naturally so did the server's tips. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Chef Vikas accepted an offer from Mohammed to be the restaurant's ongoing consultant. I will help I... you at any limit, at any extent. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's be honest. It's gone exceptionally well. Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Great food, great decor, great buzz, happy customers. I really mean it. Thank you. Bloody good job. <laughs> yes. I'm very happy with the changes Gordon has made here. He has given this place an opportunity to thrive and be a real restaurant. For all of us over here, I thank you very, very much. Listen, you're very welcome. You've got all the tools, now do it. Don't stop working hard. Gordon did what I thought was completely impossible with the restaurant. Khan? My experience with Chef Gordon was wonderful. I get the confidence that we can run this business, that we can run this restaurant successfully. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, but yeah. Okay. Right. Pull back, pull back. Excellent. Good to see you. Nice. Thank you. Very Neighbors. Good. Yes. Next time, I'm coming to eat. I'm not coming to work. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good to see you. I like to thank Chef Ramsey to being a part of this great success. Before I thought he's crazy, but he said no, he's a very passionate man. I like that very much. Excellent. Good night, guys. Thank you, Richard Lee. Stand strong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, what a transformation. I honestly didn't think we could turn this around to this extent from what I saw my first day here. My God. Oh.